leadeth me. I don't know about you. His faithful follower, you and I ought to be. Because the Lord leads us. I'm looking at ex Exodus 33. I'll read a couple of scriptures and then I'll share what is in my heart for this day. It's entitled Moses and the Glory of the Lord. That is the portion that we are reading. And the Lord said unto Moses, oh, verse 12, let's start from verse 12, sorry, verse 12, 12 to, to 23. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, bring up these people, I look a little bit better. This is me. And thou hast not let me know who thou will send with me, yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. I like that. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up from here. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Oh, I like that. I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put thee on a cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face, my face shall not be seen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But my face shall not be seen. When God leads the way, when God leads the way, that is the, the, the topic that I'm trying to handle, uh, when God leads the way. And that's why we sang that song, He leadeth me, He leadeth me. And you and I are like Moses. When led by God, but we don't see God's face, but we see his deeds. Why is it? The reason is we cannot see his face because if we see his face, then we'll be not on this earth. We'll have been translated into where he is. We only see where he has been. We see what he has done in the past, and we anticipate what he's going to do tomorrow. That's what God does for us. Because seeing him face to face with this physical body, then we have to be translated. Somebody who, who shows houses, I don't know whether you have thought of looking for a house and an agent has taken you to Zimmerman and he's He's showing you a couple of houses, this one, and you say, I don't like that one. Or that one, you say, you don't like what, that one. A real estate agent spent six months showing homes to a couple. Six months. 
They were looking for a house to buy, but for six months, he kept on showing them homes, 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 and they kept on, you know, not saying this is this one. You know, they were not ready for it. But after the six months, they saw two homes that they liked. But they could not decide which one to buy. So they were still wondering which one to buy. So that day, when they were going to buy, they went to these two homes twice. But the wife decided to go to the other home alone. And while she was alone, the agent was with her, but her husband was not with her. But she was with the agent. The agent was up somewhere as she, she was downstairs. Somehow, th that was in the path of the plains. That's where the Ndegez would land. Maybe that would have been Mbakasi. Um, or some place in Gong where they turned. And at that point, a big plane, jet plane, passed by, making a lot of noise as it was landing. So she told the agent, no, we will not take this one. We will take the other one that we had seen earlier. So the agent is asking, how did you make this decision? And the woman said, I ask of the Lord to give me a sign. And there was a sign. The zooming over of that plane was a sign because it was on the path of the planes to the airport. And she said, I knew that wasn't the house for us. You and I are looking for a sign. I think we, we, we look for signs here and signs there. Sometimes we drive around and we are asking God, God, show me a sign. Let me know for sure this is the direction you are taking me. Especially on key issues, like for example, marriage. Marriage, there are some of us that get married by, by flipping a coin, because there are two of them. One you make the head, the other one you make a tail and you flip a coin. Making decision in life. And sometimes as you look for where to live, where to buy plots, because that's also another issue in life. Where do I live? Do I live in uh, west of uh, Thika Highway or east of Thika Highway? Do I live west of Nairobi or east of Nairobi or north of Nairobi? Or where do I live? We look for, for signs. We want God to help us. But it, I know you and I, it will be easier if every decision we make, the answer comes quickly. For example, who do I marry? And the answer comes quickly because that marriage is one of the places that if you make a mess, you will live with that mess forever. I mean, eh, kwa hivyo vijana, chunga. Kwa sabu, nikinunua nyumba ngongu, ni ni hame nifikirie kuhama si nitauza lakini uwezo uza mke wako ama uuze bwana yako so it's a it, it's a tricky place but every time you are faced with a decision you need to ask god to help you so that the decision that you make becomes a decision that you can carry it with you the rest of your life a decision that you make, even the decision that we make a long time ago, the consequences of those decisions are with us. The decisions that you make carry with you. They, come, they kind of come with you the rest of your life. It's something that you need to ask the Lord to help you so that the decisions that you make every day, you make decisions that will honor, honor him. Which job should I take? Who should I marry? 
Which school or university should I go? And sometimes we are asking God, show me a sign. Let me know the sign. Show me a sign. So we, we, the scripture that we have read, the writer is Moses. And Moses is in a place where he is desperate. He is asking God for a sign. He wants God to prove, to show something, to, to, to make something workable, something that he can be so sure about. Actually, he's saying, now God, you spoke with me in the wilderness. Now I want to see you. Who are you? Moses was so desperate. He wanted to know who that God was. And Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send me with, you'll send with me. You have said, I know by you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. That's verse number 12 and 13 of, of Exodus 33. Moses, he, he gets to a place, he says, now, thank you, thank you God, but I want to know for sure. Show me something. Moses is the one who was spoken in a burning bush, but Moses is saying, Atasasa, show me something. So Moses, this great deliverer, this great leader, he wanted God to show him a sign. He wanted God to prove again and again. Though he had shown him a sign long time ago, now he wants another sign in the wilderness. He had seen a burning bush, all right. He had seen a staff that became a snake, all right. He had seen trees, branches that cleaned up and polluted water. He had seen all that. He had seen miracles upon miracles, even the sign that he did to Pharaoh. But he's saying, God, if I have found favor in your sight, Please teach me your ways and I will know you. And if I find favor in your sight, now consider that this nation is your people. He's telling him, these are people. Exodus 33, verse 12 and 13. These are your people. Show me something. I'm desperate. I want to know what you have to teach me and tell me. A couple of things that I want to bring to you. Moses is crying for a desperate sign. He's saying, show me a sign. So the first thing you and I ought to know, sometimes we can tell God, God, I am desperate for a sign. I want you to prove you are the one. I know we, you delivered them, but I'm so desperate for a sign. I want to know that you are him that you say you are. Don't you want to be guided? Don't we want to be taught by God's way? To know the path we are to take. To be shown the right way. We are a people hungry for guidance. We long for direction. We are like wanderers in the desert crying out to God, show me the way. Give me a sign. Just write it in the sky so I can see it. One time I was so desperate for a sign. I was wondering whether I should come back to this country or continue with my studies. And you know what? I don't know whether you know this. If you pray for it, you will see it. I was in one of the, the forests in Sweden, and I told God, I want, where he, show me something to tell me that you are with me in Sweden. The map of Kenya came up in the clouds. I looked up, and I saw the map of Kenya. Wow. I don't know about you. Maybe what a coincidence. The map of Kenya, can it be in the cloud? God has spoken to people even with a map or the cloud, you see the face of a person. I pray that God can help us. To say. So I was not desperate. When I saw that, I knew, yes, that is what I was asking. Something that can comfort me. Remember, I was the only black person in that part of Sweden. The only black. And I tell you, I was really black. The photos taken, I took with those guys, I appear so black. And here you tell me, Unaonekana turungi turungi. Whatever it is, I was so dark. 
kwa sababu picha zao zimewekwa vitu hizo kemiko zao they were not working for me but you can be desperate you are asking god god show me i want to know show me something show me the way give me a sign just write in the sky so that i can see it see interestingly god never wrote moses a message in the sky like me he never laid a blueprint down for him but in today's time he did not send a fax or an email or a letter he did something better praise the name of the lord he did something better he did something better for him he lifted him up and placed him on a place and told him you will see my back only you will see my back moses saw the back of the lord he was placed in a rock so that he can see the back of the lord i don't know about you but it is very interesting sometimes we we are asking for signs but as we ask for signs some of us move very fast some of us even ask show me a sign lord who should i marry that's a very dangerous thing if you don't wait because actually marriage is where a lot of us get trapped and we lose we lose it all but if we wait on god god has a way of working in us to show us the real pathway that we need to take we want something to do we are asking god show me do it i i am in this situation i want to find ways that you can lead me out of this and moses is in that situation he is asking god show me something i want to see i want to see lord i want to see it i, I if i want to if, if, for me for me to move from where i am and this your people i have to see you moses god had spoken to him but moses where he has reached he had interesting people that had caused him even do things that in his heart it was because of anger he gets to a place these are your people show me show me i want to see you i want to know you and god places him in a, in a rock he places him somewhere where he can see him but he tells him you cannot see my face but i'll place you in a place cover you with my hand and when i have passed you will see my back moses was so desperate for a sign we pray that god will have men and women that will be so desperate for god to show them a sign a sign in verse 14 something better than a sign something better than a sign he said my present shall go with thee and i will give thee rest that is better than a sign friends if there is anything that we can ask god to give us is to give us his presence something better than a sign This was the better thing that God offered Moses. God promised Moses his presence. God replied to Moses prayer, his request for a sign by saying, "My presence will go with you and I will give you rest." God personally and providentially led Moses and the nation of Israel. God offered something better than guidance. He promised he promised to be their guide. He promised to accompany them. He promised to be with them. He promised to accompany them. He promised that he will be with them. He will be with them. He was not going to be a god who speaks to them, but he was going to be a god who walks with them. And our god is the same today. He walks with us. He does not just tell us to go. He walks with us. He walks no wonder he knows the pain, the sorrow that we go through. He is not sending us. He is going with us. blessed be the name of the lord he promises to accompany us he promises to be among us he promises that there is nothing that he will not do with us if we allow him to do to do so though the word never uses the word guidance it does speak of guide we may seek guidance but god provides something better himself he wants to walk with us he wants to be with us blessed be the name of the lord which one would you prefer do would you prefer a map a road map or would you prefer god what would you prefer what would you prefer 
at a large campus, the campus map or a, or, or, or a kindly student who says, look, I'm on my way there now. I go with you and show you the way. Which would you prefer? The wandering in the Nairobi University campus looking for Chiromo or someone who says, I will walk with you to show you where Chiromo is. Because the campus can be a maze, can be a place where you don't know where the classes are. Of course, our campus is easy because the campuses, the Nairobi campus has a, a number of campuses. But you go to some campuses where it is huge, a huge place where you need some road signs to show you where even the classes are. But as a Christian, my prayer is that God will guide me, that God will go with me, that God will lead me. All what I want is God to lead me in this maze. So something better than a sign, that we should ask the Lord, God, show us something better than a sign. Moses is asking for, for, for something better than a sign. He wants the presence of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks with his friend, Exodus 3, verse 11. This verse speaks to the reality and depth of communion between Moses and God. And yet Moses, though he was hearing God, he wants us to see God face to face. And no one can see God and live, he is told. Something better than, than just thinking and planning about God is that God will walk with us. If you want to know God's will, you must get to know God. The guidance of God hinges on relationship. If we seek the guide more than guidance, like Moses was saying he wanted God, we just might see the sign we are looking for and we might miss more than what we need. We need him not only to show us the way, but we follow him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Moses is told by God, you will see me. I think God was saying, Moses, if you, uh, you want to get to the promised land, pursue me. I will go before you. See me before you. Follow me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There are some benefits of this relationship or what I would call benefits of the relationship that God wants us to have. We are a people who have grown accustomed to benefits. We want benefit. In fact, we ask, what is there for me? What is there for me? What do we expect from him? And because God's presence accompanies us, we have something. We know there are benefits. We know there are things that God can do. We know there is an account we can withdraw from. Number one, or A, we have a companion. Going back to verse number 14, my presence will go with you. My presence will go with you. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That is the song in the garden. That song says, yes, he talks with us. He walks with us. There is a companion. We have a companion with him. Regardless of our condition, our circumstance, God is with us. Our situation don't change. And they don't change God. He is still with us during hard times and when there are good times. He walks with us. He walks with me. He walks with us. Number B, we will experience rest. These are benefits of the relationship that we have with God. We will experience rest. Exodus 3, the same verse 14, it says, And I will give you rest. The rest that is spoken here is the rest that comes while we are on our journey. It's not idling rest. It is a rest that reaches to the core of their being, not just a weekly day off paid vacation or guaranteed what this and the other. But God, as I pursue whatever career I do, he gives me moments of resting in his care, knowing that where I am, he has placed me. You know, blessed people, men and women, are those that know where you are, the position that God has given you, nobody can take it away from you unless he is willing. And if he does, he will show you something else. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So in the job that you are, don't be threatened. If God wants you to move to another, he will. Because sometimes the situation, Bwana Gedhaya, can be so tough. You don't know what is happening. You are so worried. But if God wants to sustain you there, he will. It doesn't matter. If God wants to sustain you there, he will. You know, I was talking to someone else who said, this company of ours, retrenching came. But they retrenched people. The last person was the number before me. And they were all retrenched, but I wasn't. That is not a coincidence. If he wants to, he will. But if he will, then he will have to show you what to do. Because he is our God. We will experience rest. I will give you rest. One of the things that I know that God is with me is rest. That I'm not bothered. I'm not running up and down. I'm resting. I'm peaceful. The circumstance could be chaotic. But I'm peaceful. I know I told you about the accident we had in the U.S. At first I thought it was bad. Because four doctors, four doctors, they agreed my neck is broken twice. And they spoke to me nicely. You know, the doctors are very good. They say, Mr. Jim, um, you've broken your neck two places. But somehow, in my spirit, I had a lot of peace. With the broken neck or no neck, I'd be, I know there was a lot of pain. But I was so relaxed. So I asked, what next? He said, there is another doctor. I said, yeah. There must be another doctor. Behind your mask, tell your neighbor there is another doctor. <laughs> you know, I don't, it, it doesn't matter where you find yourself, there is another doctor. In other words, there is another God. Depending on where you are, there is another source of your power. There is another doctor. Amen. I said, let's go to that doctor. Now, this other one, those ones did their x-rays and whatever, twice actually. When I said I have pain here, another picture. When I said I have this, another one. Those ones. Then they took me to their big doctor. Now the one to operate in the neck. Already I told you they had prepared. Hata nilikuwa nimepigwa ile dawa ya kusaidia mwili utulie tulie. Unajua kuna shindano ingine unapigwa ya kutuliza mwili hizi nini ziase kupiga kelele huko ndani eh. The cells zitulie tulie zigoje kizu. Nilikuwa nimepigwa hiyo. So they were serious. So nilikuwa nimegoja ile ya kuwekwa sasa maji na kwanza kupasuriwa shingo. Can you imagine? Imagine your bishop amepasuriwa shingo. <laughs> but you know, at that point, I knew with a neck broken or not, I'm safer in God's hand than in their hands. So whatever they were asking me, I was telling you, it's okay. Uh, are you ready for operation? I said, I'm okay. Because I knew they cannot touch my body unless God allows them. And you know what? When the other doctor did another one, I was taken through another kibiki machine. He came and removed something that was holding my neck. And you know, let me tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Alipo kipasua, ata ile uchungu ilikuwa nyingi iliisha. Alikuwa na uchungu, unaona, ata ukiangaliwa unaona uchungu. But when this doctor says, Jim, there is, you are not broken anywhere. Pooh, he pulled it out. And you know, if they do that, what do you think? You start wondering, is he serious? Oh, you are a human being, you wonder, is it serious? But I tell you what, it was serious. God had done it, and God had healed. Now, I normally tell people, between 11 at night to about 8 in the morning, a miracle had taken place. So that I can leave to tell. There are some things that God will do. There are miracles that God will do. And we can experience his rest. We can experience his rest. You know, a story is told of two birds. Eh? They were up above on a busy city, uh, uh, watching all the people. Uh, they were up. They were watching the people as they, they were, you know, going busy in their activity. And the, the robin, one of us, the uh, robin, robin told the sparrow, do this human being 
going up and up and down. Do, do they perhaps realize we have a heavenly father? The other one said, I don't think their heavenly father is like ours. Because birds don't put anything. They just wake up in the morning, they make a few songs, they rejoice, and then they go to get food. So they are wondering, do they have the same heavenly father who cares for them like ourselves? Of course. But sometimes we behave like, no, it's not. We want to wrestle. We want to struggle. But I pray that God can help us to rest in his presence. To rest in his presence. The benefit of living in God's presence is that we can close ourselves up and wait on God to do what he has promised to do because he will do it in due time. We will be distinguishable. We, we, we will be dis, distinguishable. Distinguishable. We will be distinguishable. People will look and know we are different. In your presence, in your, if your presence does not go, that's what the people they are saying, they, we will not go. They are saying, but if we go with your presence, then they will distinguish us. They will know us. They will not know me, but I will know the power that is pushing me. I pray that God can be that to you. That every time you are thinking and you are struggling, you, you get to a place you know, no, I know where I am because your presence is going with me. Your presence is going with me. When we come into God's presence, we, we are on holy ground. We set aside everything else and we stand in his holy ground. And we know on holy ground, we are safe on holy ground. In his care, we are safe in his care. The presence of the Lord. And in that situation, verse number 17, we will be known. I want to read that verse to you. And the Lord said to, to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. I, my biggest cry in every situation that I find myself is, does God know me? Am I known of God? Because if God knows me, even when situation and circumstance are hard, God still comes. What was coming, what was in my mind the 10 minutes that I waited for the ambulance to stabilize me was many things. And all the four doctors thought, thought I was confused. They were asking the same question. How old are you? When were you born? One day. And then they are wondering. And then they ask Alice, was he yani, alichanganyikiwa? But I wasn't. Si kuchanganyikiwa. I knew my name. Verse number 17, we will be known. The accompanying presence of God causes us to stand out in the crowd, to be distinct, to be separate, to be unusual. He calls us to be different. The Lord answered Moses, I will do this very thing you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I will know you by name, Exodus 3 and verse 17. Can you imagine being known by God? That's what the whole uh, 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 the whole story is that God can know you by your name. Known by God. It is hard to explain, but to have someone great know you and know who you are, you know, it, 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 don't you think it's great to, to be known by somebody great? They always mistake us. They don't know us. The DU does not know us. The DC does not know us. The president does not know us. The DU does not know us. 
But if I'm known by God, that idea that God has known me, can you imagine being known by God? That he knows where you are, he knows what you're doing. He knows even the accident as it happens. And he knew that there was nothing broken. And the psalm says it was broken twice. But he knew there was no way. He knew it before. But for me, I walk by pursuing. That's why Moses is being told, no, what you'll do, I'll cover you, but you'll see me. We normally see what God has been able to do. He has gone before us. He gives us victory along the way. The Lord answered Moses, I will do this very thing you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I will know you by name. We will be known. God says he will know us. Can you imagine being known by God? That there is nothing that he, he, he doesn't know about you. Nothing he doesn't know about me. It is hard to explain. But to have someone great know who you are, bring some sense of significance to life. And I know it. Kama unajulikana na mudosi, si unasemaga, uyo ni namjua. Wacha wale watu wanakutishaga. Unajua kuna watu wanatishaga wegine. Ati, ata uyo boss to risoma na yeye. You know, uyo ni akukustua tu. But, but if, if somebody knows someone, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord answered Moses, I will do this thing you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. It is hard to explain, but I have some great, someone great know who you are, brings a sense of significance to life. You, you, you feel like, you, you know, the, the president knows you, but the president does not know me. Can I tell you another joke? I have greeted Ruto. I'm Kono. He doesn't know me. But I told him, I was in Embu, and I told him, Bishop Jimmy Kemani, you ask him whether he knows me. <laughs> and he was smiling. Even Alice greeted him. Na tukona picha tumepigwa. Paparasi walikuwa hapo, anatuuzia hiyo picha. Tukona ayo. I was in Nembu somewhere. <laughs> Nikikuonyesha hiyo picha utafikiria na mnagani? Hatujuani. <laughs> Alisimairi, nikasimairi. But today, I can guarantee you, he does not know whether I exist. He does not know whether... I can carry that picture to his office. And he can even ask, Uku ni wapi? <laughs> but you know, when, when, when somebody great knows you, you feel, you feel yeah, he knows, he knows me, but... Uhuru does not know me. Ruto does not know me. None of the cabinet ministers know me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm okay. How about you? <laughs> but can you imagine being known by God? Which means there is no way that God will not open that door that I need him to open. Why? Because he has all the power. It is hard to explain. But I tell you that God knows you. The God of the universe knows you. The God of the universe knows you. In verse number 18, then Moses said to the Lord, please, let me see your glory. Let me see your glory. The glory of God is weighty importance and shining majesty and accompanies God's presence. That's what my angel said. Lord, make, make me see your glory in every place. The heavens declare it, I know. The creation witnesses yet. The church embodies yet. The Christians reflect it. But I, personally, help me see your glory. Because the glory of God means my healing. The glory of the Lord means my provision. The glory of God means that I am settled. In him. May God allow you to see his glory. That's what Moses was crying out. God, then let me see your glory. Let me see your splendor. And the Lord says, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. The word goodness refers to the manifestation or the essence of God's glorious attributes. Most often thought of as works of his hands. 
The goodness of God is the concrete experience of what God has done, what God is doing in the lives of his people. So Moses experienced the goodness of God time and time again, but he did not witness all the goodness of God. It's just part of the goodness of the Lord. May God, you and I, walk in his splendor and see his glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Here is the interesting thing about the signs of God. His glory, his goodness, and his grace. Most often as God is leading us, we see these signs afterwards. We see these signs afterwards. We see, oh, there was God. Oh, in, in this marriage, oh, there was God. In this business, oh, there was God. In, in what I'm called to do, oh, there was God. In my activities, you see, we see after, we see God was involved. But before we are telling God, help me to discern, because there are so many things. But afterwards, after you have lived, you know that God gave you the best person to walk with you in this life. May God help us to see that. Moses wanted to see God's glory. He wanted to see a sign from God. And God said, you will see signs. And you have seen signs. And my signs will be always. But my goodness, my grace is around you. And all what you need is the grace of God and the goodness of God around you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I know that we too, we can be led by God. To see God's face but to see his back, but we see God's performance, God's back, God's victory, God's performance, what God has done. We are seeing what he has been able to do for us. We cannot see his face because we cannot see him coming. We see God's back because we see where he has been. You see, sometimes even if we sow, some of us will say no. No wonder we will see after he has passed, then we say, wow, that was God. Have you ever felt that? Wow, there must have been God in the place. Wow. Oh, huyo, huyo alikuwa mungu. Huyo, there's an accident and you come out alive. You say, oh, there, there was God. Oh, it's something, you are looking for something. You are looking for something and finally you find it. You say, oh, and there was God there. We see God after. We see God because if we saw him, we will not even believe him. Did you know if we saw him, we will have doubt also. So we see his works and his deeds. Then we can say there was God. We cannot see him and leave. But when we see his works, we can know that God passed this way. So after the miracle that happened when we went through that accident in the U.S., and I could not come back sitting on a normal chair. I came back on a, you know, you know I could complain. You know I said, pick a kid and say, mungu, sitagi kwanda Kenya ni melala. But you know I enjoyed it. Nili furahia. Hey. Kwandega umelala. Na umepoa blanket. Yasi, na pilo. Yani umepewa kitanda kwa ndege. He? Si yale zena lala yake na mine lala yangu. The glory of God. The glory of God. We see God's back, but we see where he has been. We see God's back, and we see what he has done in the past. All of us have a past. We see God's back, then we anticipate what God is going to do. We can guess, if God has done that to you, my brother, then he can do much better. From where we are, we know God has something better for us. God has something better for us. We anticipate. We are looking forward. Because if God was able to save us, you know, I, 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 I always, when I think about that accident, I always wonder. Mimi ndio niliumia na nilikuwa nyuma. Alice alikuwa pale paligongwa. Poop! Na Alice. Pff. 
Hata ni mimi nilikuwa nikimwambia Marune magothe. But but me maloto <laughs> na nilikuwa nyuma. I was at the back. And the lady that was driving it. The lady that was driving it. Mwe tu aonesimas. Nothing. God was teaching me something. God was teaching me something. God was teaching me something. And I'm still asking him, God, continue teaching me and revealing what you taught me then because there is something of significant that the Lord taught me. Shall we pray? Our heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, we know that dear Father, you guide and you lead your people. You lead us. You lead us just like you led the children of Israel. You have led us. You have delivered us. You have provided for us. Father, you are still leading us even now. And dear Father, we know when we are led by you, we are safer. My brother, my sister, maybe you are crying out, Lord, lead me. You are in a situation where you are saying, Lord, deliver me. Take me out of this. All what you need is God to lead you. And he leadeth us. The Lord leads us. Let's tell him to lead us. I don't know, maybe you find yourself in a situation where you are asking God to show you. Is this the person or is it the business? Is this what I ought to do? You are asking the Lord, is this where I should live? Maybe some of you are having two or three situations that you are asking God, which one should I take? And you need God to guide you. He leadeth. Just like he led the children of Israel. And in particular, he led Moses. There, are some, there is somebody here who is crying out, Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me. Lord, guide me. I am in a mess. I don't know where, I don't know where the, the next road is, the next path. If that is you crying out to the Lord, would you stand on your two feet? I want to pray with you. You are saying, Lord, where I am, I need you. I need you to show me the next move. I need you to show me the next move. I'm, you might be thinking you're at the end. You have reached the end. And you are crying out, Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. What you are saying, in fact, you are saying, Lord, show me the way. Show me the way so that I can walk in it. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we all find ourselves in situations like Moses. Moses found himself in a way where he wanted a confirmation that you are with him. And dear Father, we are standing in your presence so that you can show us, you can confirm us, you can deliver us, you can lead us, you can guide us in the mighty name of Jesus. The next move, Heavenly Father, could be marriage. The next move, Heavenly Father, could be business. The next move, Heavenly Father, could be a change of career. The next move, Heavenly Father, could be a change of location. The next move, Heavenly Father, could be moving from one town to another. Lord God, the next move, we need you. We need you like Moses who said, Guide, I want to see you to know that I'm on the right path. Lord God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Every man, every woman standing, they are crying out the next move. They want Heavenly Father to see you. May you show them the way. May you tell them this is the way to walk in it. And dear Father, may you give them peace in the situation they find themselves. Lord God, some are looking to do some business. They are asking, is this the business? Guide them into the right business. Lord God, some of them are saying, guide me to the right spouse. Lord God, they are saying, is this the right spouse? Guide them to the right spouse. Some of them are saying, is this the business that I should do? Guide them to the right uh, business. And Father, there are some that are crying, deliver me from the pit I find myself. Deliver me from the situation and confusion that I find myself. I want to walk in your grace. I want to walk in your favor. Lord God, that is the cry of your people. May you deliver us. May we find favor in the sight of the Lord. I pray for every man, every woman standing. That Father, they are crying out, Lord, show me the way. They are saying, Lord, show me the way. Lord God, may you show them the next move they are going to do. And Heavenly Father, we will come back to this church to give you thanks and to give you praise for the victory that you are going to bring to us. Because I declare victory. I declare victory upon your people. I declare, dear Father, a pathway. I declare that Heavenly Father, they will find you. 
They will know you whom to know is life eternal. I want to thank you, Heavenly Father, because if you did it for me, you can do it for us. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord praise in the house, shall we?